Well, hello, South Florida, and hello to all of my Curvis listeners. This is Jemmy, your host and producer from Flintstone Media, bringing you the newest episode of the Curve the Cube podcast. Yay! And uh, on this episode, this is an ep- uh, something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I-, I like to spotlight special events that are going around and ones that um, I think y'all are going to be interested in. And that also really helps showcase what cool things we're doing down here in South Florida. The last one I did was a long time ago um, when I did the, the Shock Pop Comic Con uh, episode podcast. Go back and-, and look that up. It's really one of the earlier episodes and it's fun I got to interview a bunch of people at different at uh, a comic-con it was, it was really cool but on this so I haven't been able to do something like this in a long time and um, on this episode I was super thrilled to be there for the grand opening of South Florida's newest hotspot for fine art it's called foundation fine art it's a gallery that used to be a medical facility, believe it or not, um, and the art director, Robin Tortorici, she has done such an amazing job converting what was a medical office of some sort into this incredibly impressive fine art gallery, so I encourage everybody to go check it out. It is in Deerfield at 3400 Southwest 10th Street, and uh, I just had a great time. I went to the opening, there was wine and champagne flowing, and a bunch of the artists were there, and it was a packed, jam-packed house with incredible orders. I mean, she did it right. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> I just had to say, because I'm remembering those meatballs, they were so good. But, um, yeah, so I had a great time, and I walked around and I talked to a bunch of the artists, and um, so I want to say the ones who are featured on this podcast are uh, include Walt Peterson, who does incredible equine art, portrait art, underwater stuff. He's a really great painter. Um, Yaakov Heller, who his pop art is really impressive. He does incredible portraits of uh, from pop art, um, and he also does fantastic sculpture, and he does so many awesome tributes to Jewish culture. In fact, I saw this uh, violin that he made that is a sculpture. It's a violin, and but it's a really a tribute to Fiddler on the Roof, and I thought it was really, really spectacular. Um, also met Frankie Curran, and he has a way of finding the true beauty of his subjects and everything that he does. So um, you might look at it, his painting at first glance and see something, but then if you spend an extra 30 seconds looking at it, it'll hit you what it's really about. And it's really, he's really talented that way. And of course, April Ancelona, who was my guest from episode 59, the last episode. She was my future guest. She's the one who uh, has coined the term fashion fusion. She's done incredible things with pop art and fashion and um, putting it all together. Um, so you'll hear her on the podcast briefly again. Uh, Aaron Ansarov, who is, he's a photographer whose recent line of photography called The Human Spectrum is so, uh, I, there are no, really no words for it. It's beautiful. It's captivating. Um, here I am trying to think of words. Beautiful, captivating, but it really just has to be seen to be believed. So I'm going to include all of the um, contact info, all of the social media accounts, website info for each and every one of these artists in the write-up. So go check them out individually. Uh, sit back, relax, and listen to this podcast and, and hear what they have to say about themselves and their art and their passion. And please go visit Foundation Fine Art. Contact art director Robin Tortorici by phone at 561-314-9523 or at Robin at fo- uh, Foundation Fine Art, excuse me, Robin at Foundation artservices.com and uh, they're also on you know Facebook and all of that so Facebook and Instagram let's go look them up and this episode of Curve the Cube is sponsored by my brother Gerard under his company jail oh you've also probably heard him on uh, pod squad episodes so rewind and find him on that but this episode of the Curve of the Cube is brought to him by his company, GL Esquire Consulting. And through his company, he gives really great legal business advice. He um, can run escrow stuff and just do really great things for you if you have uh, the desire to start your own business or need some guidance regarding regarding the business and making it really work for you. Give him a call. He's a Harvard and Columbia Law graduate, so he's kind of like one of the most brilliant people I know. And he's worked for some of the largest, most prestigious law firms in the world. Um, I was just thinking the other day how he's he spent some time working in Sweden. He spent some time working in 
the Netherlands. Like he's just, he's brilliant and um, well-traveled. So ladies, he is available. I'm just kidding. He's going to kill me for saying that. All right. <laughs> he's worked with clients in a variety of industries from financial services, agriculture, music production, fashion, technology. And he's happy to bring all of that expertise to helping you and your business needs. And when you're his client, you're your family. So uh, reach out to him. He can be reached at, by phone 786-531-9834. Or you can email him at Gerard at GLE sq consulting.com the esq stands for esquire so g l e s q consulting.com and find him on his facebook page gl esquire consulting and all of that information of course will also be included in the write-up and be sure to uh follow dj john hitta and say thank you for these amazing Curve the cube.com music beds dj john hitta i'm sure he'll love to see that in a tweet and follow curve the cube on twitter instagram facebook pinterest uh, YouTube, I said Yahoo, I don't know what I'm talking about. YouTube, Tumblr, uh, you get the picture everywhere. Um, and uh, that's it. So sit back and relax, enjoy this, the 60th episode of Curve the Cube, where I visited Foundation Fine Art for their grand gallery opening. Enjoy! Curve the Cube will now initiate. Thank you. Uh, I'm doing a new series, but it's... Hi! Hi! How are you? Very, I mean, good, good, good. That's okay. Uh, Wait, this is Kelly. Oh. Yeah! Hey, Robin. Congratulations. Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. Hi. Well, nice, nice to meet Jimmy, you. Jimmy, not Jimmy, but Jimmy. Right, Oh, I right. like it. Thank Just, you. J-E-M-M-I? Uh, that's how it's pronounced. It's not really how it's How's spelled. It spelled? J-A-I-M-E. Okay. Like J-E-M in Gem. French. Okay. Yeah. J-E-M. J-E-M. Uh, Something like that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm doing a podcast for Robin, uh-huh. um, where I'm walking around and talking to the artist. Okay. Would you like to participate? Awesome, I would love to. Great, great. Um, so I just wanted to know, I noticed you have marine life and you have um, equine life. Uh, any chance you were raised in South Florida? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm a portrait painter. I'm classically trained. I, I painted for 25 years doing portraits. And I came down to South Florida and I reinvented myself. I did a musicians at first. Like that painting of Bruce over here, mm-hmm. that's mine. That's mine right there. Oh, wonderful. Okay. That's fantastic. So I did Bruce and I did Clarence. Okay. You know Clarence? No. Clarence Clemens. Oh, yes. The saxophone. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. Yeah, let me show you. <laughs> now I know who you're I want to see Clarence Clemens? You know, he passed away. I gave him the painting I'm going to show you. I gave it to him six. It was a gift from the, the, the foundation um, for Homesick. We're at the foundation art gallery, but this is the foundation for Homesick because he was a fundraiser for them. He raised over $6 million for them. Oh, he had a heart of gold. So between the the horses and the marine life and the portraits, what would you say is the the common fabric or common thread that inspires you? Something that almost can breathe. Mm, mm-hmm. When I paint, I used to go by the, the, the name The Painter of Life. That was my website oh, for 10 years, nice. painteroflife.com. But, but then someone said, you need to brand yourself. Mm-hmm. People need to know you. Mm-hmm. You need to get your name out there on the internet as much as you can. Mm-hmm. So I changed to Walt Peterson Fine Art. Gotcha. And I gave that up. Gotcha. So that's my website now. Yeah, I think it's really impressive how you're able to capture almost a whole separate scene. Oh, nice. It's amazing. Thank you. I am really I'm truly stunning. blessed, and uh, every day yeah. I can go into my studio and, and paint. It's just like Had I just thank the Lord every day. I'm a Christian, and I really that's real important. That's really important to good. Me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and how did you get involved with Foundation? Um, my printer contacted uh, me. Mm-hmm. He met with um, Robin and t- showed. He had a picture of my work on his phone. Showed her my work and. Um, he said, you need to call her because she's very busy. You want to get in the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I called her, and the rest was history. Awesome. Yeah. So my last question for you is what one thing I find totally captivating is when you, in your paintings with the horses, how you're able to capture the fullness of the rest of the scene through just the reflection in the eyes. How did you train yourself to do that? How much work did Good that question. take? Good question. You know what? I just paint what I see. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I, I, I have the ability to, to render it realistically and and give it life, and mm-hmm. I, I just paint what I see. As you're painting, are you thinking maybe what the horse is thinking, wondering what he's thinking, mm-hmm. what he's saying? I'm pushing the envelope there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thought. That's the thought. I just I love horses. Mm-hmm.
And do you mind if I take a picture of you against your painting? Sure, sure. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Whichever, however, you, wherever you like yeah, to I'll be. Say, this is Tommy Jones's polo field in the background in mm -hmm. Wellington. Mm -hmm. I actually snuck on the grounds. I saw, <laughs> I was driving down the road on the background, Lake, Lake Worth Road, right back here. And I saw these beautiful blooms and everything. And uh, I said, I gotta find out where it is. So I went down the side road, snuck in the gate, I went back and snuck into the gate. One of the um, groundsmen saw me, came racing over in a truck. <laughs> he says, what are you doing here like this? He's from Argentina. Yeah. I said, oh, I told him I'm an artist. I'm looking for a background. I showed him this picture. I told him uh, what, what it, cause I had this picture without the background. I yeah. said, I need a background. So I said, look, that's beautiful, magnifico. Go, can I take a picture? He said, sure. I took the picture and that's and that's what I did. That's beautiful. Where would you like to stand? Oh, sure, sure, sure. All right. Um, what do you think? What, what Wherever do you think you, you'd be most... That's Michael Phelps. Since the light's better over here. She took pictures sure. of me before it. From the lights back there, it was bad. <laughs> you got it. One, two, three. Got it. One more? Sure. Okay. Cool. Great to meet you and yeah, talk likewise. to you. Thank hey, you. Um, thank I you. Don't have a card with me, but Let me give you mine, sure. And I'll send you an email. I didn't bring cards because she's representing me. Of course. And I just want to play well. This is my first time with her. Aww. How'd you meet her? Through April. Do you know April? No. She's one of the other I, artists. I, I, and I've she heard and of I April. have known each other for a couple months now okay. and she invited me and so thank so you. So how are you gonna promote the how are you gonna promote? I have my own podcast channel, so this will I do? You do? Well, how are you? Uh, my most famous you. artist I have here. Hi, Jimmy. how are you? My name is Jemmy. Jemmy, nice to meet you. And what's your name? Yakov Heller. Yakov. Oh, I love that name. Two ways. Yakov. That's a very strong yeah. name. I love He's it. A gentleman. I He's love a gentleman. it. I love it. Have you told him what I'm doing here? <laughs> she does all these podcasts. Um, you know, on the internet, you mm -hmm. probably know more about it than I do. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> it's just people streaming the radio, right? Pretty much, it's pretty much on demand um, episodes. And so I'm just kind of going around this amazing gallery opening and talking She's to the artists. And the artists. So we definitely want to do a podcast with her. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just going to weave it together and make an episode, a really great episode Absolutely. about your opening Absolutely. and about your gallery and about all of you fine people. Both so the best. great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you for the introduction. Cheers! You're the bestest. So I have to ask, and you don't have to share your secrets, but I'm so curious, did you start with a real violin or did you, what is this made of? I started out with the wax. I made it from wax. Oh, okay. And I made a mold of it and I cast it in bronze. That's amazing. So it's a, it's a violin menorah. I love it. I love it. It's very, uh... It almost like has history it's already, right? It's the fiddler, oh, it's, mm -hmm. fiddler, fiddler on, the on the roof. Ah, now I get it. Now that you turn around, I get it. That's awesome. I saw Fiddler on the Roof when I was probably mm, maybe eighth grade, something like Zero that. Zero Mostel was the first one on Broadway, and now they just opened November 20th for the fifth revival. The longest running show ever on Broadway, mm. Fiddle on the Roof, and you can't even get tickets for it. I believe you. The New York you. Times Choice. I believe you. And the, the star of it, who's playing Tevia, is a five-time Tony Award nominee. Oh, forget it. Yeah, I'm never going to get tickets. <laughs> And I just did three fiddler on the roof. Been bronze for them. For the wow. Cast. One for the producer, one for the director, and Good one, for, for you. one for the star. That's amazing. That's and amazing. They invited me up there to you know, get producer seats. And, mm -hmm. uh, so That's awesome. I just don't want to go. It's cold. I know, it's right? It's away. freezing up there. So I'd where, where? Be, uh, uh, yeah. So where are you from? Cleveland. Cleveland. The mistake by the lake. It's ah! than any place in the Let me tell you, Cleveland is like mm, my third home, I would say. Florida, New Orleans is, is number two, Cleveland's number three. I love Cleveland. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time there a few years ago uh, for business. I was up there like a few times a week, which is weird to say, but it's true. I fly there two, three times a week, so I love Cleveland. So when did you move down to Florida? I've been in Florida now for 25 years, 1989. Wow, wow. And how did you first get into making your beautiful art? I mean, did you start with sculpting or painting? I moved to Ohio when I was five years old mm -hmm. in elementary school. And I made 
an elephant out of clay. Uh huh. And my teacher had a kiln and baked it, and fired it, and I painted it. And I took it home, and my parents made me take it back where I stole it from. <laughs> they didn't believe you. And I had to make another one in front of Where's your truck? On the side. side. Okay. <laughs> So did you finally so they convince send them? me to a gifted school, Cleveland Museum School of Art for gifted kids. Wow. And I didn't like that. I mean, while the teacher was teaching us to paint horses using potatoes, you know, the big potatoes, the body, and the oh, really? small, medium potatoes, the neck, and then the small potatoes, the head. And every time I'm doing a portrait of her. You know, right, right. <laughs> You're way ahead of the class. So I've been doing this all my life. Wow, it just comes and from within, huh? I had to support huh? my family to be an artist. Yeah. Because my mother was an artist, both her brothers were professional artists, portrait artists, landscape artists. And my sisters are both artists and sculptors. Wow. One's a musician who, after 50 years old, she started painting after she finished her career as a a musician, she was the first woman president of the American Symphony Orchestra. Oh my gosh. And I played the Orchestra. So it just runs she, in the family, in the blood. I said, why did you start painting all of a sudden? She says, because I'm free to paint. I don't have to follow all the notes exactly. Uh -huh. It's a freedom. It's a, and I understand. So can you share with me a little bit about the what you have featured here at the gallery? Yeah, well, uh, of course, the Fiddler on the Moon. Yes, which I'm a big fan of. And I do a lot of Marilyn Monroe. Have you, you need to talk to April, because so does she. So you need to find April. I'll bring her over to introduce you guys. And mm -hmm. yeah, she's going to love it, because she, she loves Marilyn Monroe, April, too. April and Sarah? Mm -hmm. I know. Oh, well, then there you go. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> Easiest introduction well, I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. So how do you how do you choose who you're going to paint? Is there is there something about um, this wonderful collection of people? I mean, they're all inspiring people in their own right. Is there I mean, something everything that everything comes from an inspiration? One way or another, Rocky, for instance. Yeah. One of my best friends is Carol Connors. She wrote the theme song to Rocky. There you go. Gonna fly now. There you go. And she was a lyricist and she wrote it with Bill Conti. But uh, Rocky was an inspiration for Absolute for, geez, for America, really. And John yeah. Lennon, of course, uh -huh. uh, you know, as he sang a piece. You know, he, uh, yeah. Is, can I ask you just real quick, is this, is this you yes. painting? Me painting Marilyn. Oh, I, I love got it. got a commission. Well, I did this in my gallery, and a woman says, can you paint me in there with, instead of Marilyn? Which I did. Uh, and from that in her home, a big one, uh -huh. I've got another commission. People see it in her home and she's commissioned the other to do her and her daughter. Mm -hmm. Now she wants me to do her and her husband. She already has a, a painting at home of me. <laughs> right, 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 right. The husband's like, well, where am I? <laughs> but I started with Marilyn Monroe because a woman came to me and said, I, you know, I just bought this $30 million apartment on the beach and I want uh, eight foot painting, oil painting, with Marilyn right. Monroe, with a pink yeah. dress, and jewels falling out of the sky. Oh, naturally. From, mm. from a movie that she did where she sang, uh, Diamonds Are a Girl's, Girl's Best, Best Friend. Friend. Uh -huh. Well, I think it was a message to her husband. <laughs> she opened the elevator doors open to the her The first thing you see. <laughs> <should look inside. laughs> That's great. Great for you, though, because anybody who comes over... It's a huge impression. That's uh, awesome. Since, since then, I've um, had calls from Maryland, mostly from women. It. I believe it. I believe it. Well, I think your your work is unbelievably impressive, and um, congratulations. And I wish you great luck with being here and 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 having your spot here. So, congratulations. I have some other meeting. large bronzes up front. A dancer. Okay. As you walk in the door to the right, there's a bronze dancer stands up about four foot. Awesome. I will check it out. Let me take a, do you mind if I take a picture of you with your... Sure. Where would you like me to photograph you? How about from Lady Gaga? I love it. Whenever you're ready, hi. I'm ready. You are? Okay, show me your stuff, my dear. Right here? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe later, maybe yeah. later. My wife put in the pool. So this is my stuff right here. Awesome. Yeah. I was looking at this the other night. I came in and um, interviewed April. Oh, I was like, oh, I love this stuff. This is my David Bowie that's not David Bowie, but everybody thinks he's David Bowie. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> have you had to explain yourself all night so far? Whatever, right? Nope. <laughs> so, okay, so tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about your work. <laughs> so, this is an older Ala Prima piece from when I was a student at, uh -huh. at um, the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I went to the Art Institute, came from New York, I got a couple scholarships and stuff, went to the Art Institute. Awesome. That's where I met Tom DeVita, he's my mentor, he's a great friend of mine, and he taught me how to paint. <laughs> so Tom DeVita, yeah, he told me to paint, and this was an a la prima study of a friend of mine. I was actually, at that time, I'm Catholic, mm -hmm. so at that time I was meeting a lot of like atheists and stuff, and I was like the weirdo because I was Catholic, you know, going to like art school. It's a very interesting dynamic here, coming from New York to Florida, I tell you. But, um, so I met a lot of atheists, and I understood a lot of like the opposition and all this other really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started to do things based on Christianity, mm -hmm. and I would actually look deeper into them and that's what I like to do with all my pieces look deeper into meanings like you'll see a tattoo but it won't really be there I'll put it in as gotcha. a symbolism okay. I like a lot of symbolism so this was a nine foot antichrist painting and it was like I want you to like it I was like I want you to look like you like being crucified yeah I know this I want you to look like you're being crucified. Uh -huh. So he was a really great model. Cause so there was a model for this. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is the person I went to school with. Okay, gotcha, so, And he's gotcha, like the gotcha. most plain Jane person that like would always put on. He was like very much a woman's artist. Uh -huh. So this is the stuff that he did. He came, dressed the nines, makeup, lace like thing for me, ready. He stood on the easel and pretended wow. he was being crucified. And, I have and amazing, liking it. And I had an amazing photo shoot. <laughs> yeah. And um, it just stayed as an a la prima because it just looked What really does cool. that mean, a la prima? prima means in one sitting. Uh -huh. So I painted it all at one time. So it's wow. a quick study, like three or four hours. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's awesome. Thank you. This is my newer work at the bottom. This is um, my new stuff is based on transformation and the. You know, transformation in the world. What do you think of? Think of a butterfly. Mm -hmm. So, butterflies yeah. and transformation and what that means. So, this is all about a man being a man with the masks that you need to wear mm. in the world and what a man is a strong person right. you know rugged tattoos but only in the darkness where he feels safe he has this jar so the title is called he keeps his madness in the jar and I heard, I heard this I heard this quote I love years that. ago when I drew a sketch and I did it and then I did a, a transformational training mm -hmm. and I met my friend who's the model for this painting mm -hmm. and I said oh my god I drew you Three years before Stop I ever met you. Stop it. And if you knew him, you know this painting is perfect for him. Oh my god. So it's about being a man in society and what that means and what that looks like. And hiding your vulnerability, your compassion, everything that you withhold from the world. So the mm -hmm. madness, I want it to be like this delicate feminine principle to the masculine. I can't help but notice, and you were talking about Christianity and, and, and everything, so I can't help but notice that there's the necklace with the cross, and then he also has a nipple ring. Yeah. Any reason for those two to be the main pieces of jewelry in there? No. No? No. All right, just curious. Yeah. <laughs> to bring the eye around. Oh, okay, that yeah. works. <laughs> Because this draws your eye down here to the hand. Totally. The and this brings it right back around. Totally. It comes in ah, this really nice triangle that you have going on. Absolutely. <laughs> and the only absolutely. cool thing in the painting is the butterfly. Everything else is all warm tones, even right, black. Right, 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 right. That's so, yeah. true. So the butterfly is everything that you withhold from the world. In this case, vulnerability, compassion, feminine energy, all that. So only in order in to quote unquote be a man, only yeah. in the darkness can you really show that. But the question becomes, what happens to the butterfly if you lock it up in a jar? It dies. It suffocates. So the question really is: Is he letting it out or is he holding it in? Mm -hmm. I guess maybe you only know the answer. I don't know the answer. You don't know the no. answer. It's always open to interpretation. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So that's what this painting is about, and that's, this is the first in many of my new. This is my the start of my new series. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you have a series. Is there a name it's, for it? Uh, it's called Hirath. Yeah, it's H I R A E T H. Ooh, what and is it's that? about. It's a word. So I think it's a Celtic or Welsh or something like okay. that. Okay. It's a word about like missing a home that you can never go back to, mm. or that never that was. That alone is very deep. Yeah. 
So it's about, again, coming back to who you are, perfect, whole, and complete. What you think you lost, what you think you need to find that's really already inside of you, mm -hmm. and what you don't show in the world. Mm -hmm. And breaking through that. Do you already have a plan for what else will come through the line for this series, or is it kind of coming as it, as it comes? Well, like I said, I did a transformational training, and a lot of it is based on my experiences in that. Mm -hmm. And from that, I do have some other stuff coming out of it that I'm already planning. Yeah. It doesn't fit with this body, but it will transition really well into whatever is next. And that's more universal, galaxy kind of thing. So I'm really cool and coming up to it. Um, it's a woman. It's actually the person who signed me up for the training. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a woman, and she's going to be in the universe. And she's going to be holding her hand out. And the galaxy in the middle is actually red and in the shape of a heart. So it's like being in the heart of the galaxy, you are the galaxy, you uh, are the stardust. And she's going to be like evaporating into the stardust. Yeah. But again, it doesn't fit with this yet, but that's that's the route that it's going in, so it's really cool. It's interesting because when you when I look at um, typical like Christian paintings or works by Christian artists, it's very blatant and obvious where they're coming from and what those roots are. But I look at your stuff and there's like a twist to it and, it and it makes you think about it differently, it makes you relate to it differently. Differently. Um, and when you're explaining that you know, your heart's in the universe, you are the universe, I'm thinking that's a very, you know, you could talk about the, 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 the relationship to, to, to Christianity and God and, and, and Christ and all that, and, 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 and but it's a very different way to look at yeah. it. I love that. Yeah. It's, a, it's more of a conversation with the universe because, like I said, I'm Catholic, but I'm not like... Holy Roller Catholic. Born again. Like, yeah, I'm not <laughs> like that. Like, I, I, my family, some of them hate me because I'm like the Catholic that goes to church only on Christmas, right. Easter. Right, 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 so right, right, right. it's funny to be tied into like a Christian painting because like that's where this was going, and then right, this right. kind of became. It broke out of like the religious aspect into. But still always to my roots. Gotcha. You know, so it was going to be in my roots, but not just as religion, but like an ontological mm -hmm. standpoint. What do you hope that people remember about you or know about you when they experience your work? I want to bring forth the feeling of perfect, whole, and complete. That's what I want. I want them to see that you can be a strong man and still want vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Or you can be a really feminine woman, like my wife was right behind me, and have really powerful energy mm -hmm, can still come mm -hmm. from feminine. It almost goes back to like Greek mythology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like in a it's sense, like my work for me is more tied back into Greek mythology and like my background loving those myths and stuff like that. Interesting. And thinking back into gods and goddesses and what they represented and why they represented that. Mm -hmm. And like how we're the embodiment of that in some way, shape, or form. Right. You know, it's right. just, it's, it goes back to like a basic principle for me of being this. Like, if you're being a certain way, you're going to attract that. So it's law of attraction. Mm -hmm. There you go. Law of attraction. There you go. Okay. Well, that just All came right. down to law of there attraction. There you go. We boiled so, it down in this podcast here to here. Law of, yeah, it's the law of attraction <laughs> in every way, shape, or form. Awesome. Yeah. That's wonderful. And how did you get involved with Foundation? So I know April used to work with April. Mm -hmm. She's a great friend of mine, great coworker. Mm -hmm. And she called me and she's like, I think it's time for you to like get your stuff back out there. Because I kind of just was really secluded since art school. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. was like four years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, I was just doing a lot of portraits and I felt like there was like an emptiness to me that I felt. And then like I said, I did the transformational training. It's called gratitude training. And I did it and it's just wow like it just connected me with like my vision and what I wanted to do mm -hmm. and how I can heal the world in some sense through my artwork that's awesome so if I wanted somebody to remember it's like I want to heal you through my artwork I want, you, I want something to resonate on that level like that molecular level that's a beautiful message yeah, that's cool, right? I love it it's like so woo woo and out there but <laughs> But it, um, that's me, you know. I want to show the duality of masculine, divine, masculine, sacred, feminine principles in yeah. everybody. True. And that it's like equality. Yeah. You know, stop being, stop wearing masks to look good or whatever in front of people. Just be like raw and authentic. Right. And that's that's how I am. Right. You know? Right. It does challenge you to be raw and authentic. Like I'm looking at this painting. I'm thinking. You know, I'm imagining it in, uh, let's see, a, a, a guy's 
house, apartment, whatever, on his wall, yeah. and what that might mean to his visitors, and what impression that might mean right. of him right. to his visitors, and that type of thing. Or even yeah. as an artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, just because you're a male artist doesn't mean every model, every model has to be female. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Why? It doesn't resonate with me. Right, right. You know? Well, I think you've done a beautiful job. You do a great job of capturing a lot of feeling and emotion and, a, and just a great image. Thank you, you, you can tell you really thought it through and I love it. Thank you. So congratulations. Thank and thank you so, you so much, much for being on the podcast. Thank you. Would you like to say, sign my uh, guest book? Yeah. Okay. I didn't take any art, not arm twisting. <laughs> I need to talk to you, of course. You do? Yeah. Okay, what's going on there, girlfriend? I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. I'm so excited. How does it feel to have the opening finally here? It's awesome. We're having a great response to the gallery, so I'm having a lot of fun. And yeah. yeah. It took a lot of hard work, huh? It did. Are you recording? Totally oh recording. my goodness, of course. I'm just recording. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Debbie. <laughs> so, what's it like to see all these people here? And it's, just, it, it's an awesome, it's an awesome feeling. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's like high energy, which I love. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I remember um, when we talked the other day. Yes. You're saying that you like to look at people's faces when they see your art. Yes. And so, um, I can imagine you've been. Have you had a chance to do a lot of that tonight? <laughs> Not a lot, but I've been trying. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying. You would try. Well, it's good. Well, congratulations. I just wanted to say um, I'm really proud of you, you and happy you. for you. Thank you. I'm going to try to catch Robin at some point tonight, too. Okay. I'm going to see if she'll chat with me. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad you made it, too. Oh, I, yeah, totally, I know. It took like almost an hour, an hour on 95. Oh, yeah. and mess, but no, no, it was worth it. Definitely worth it. Awesome. Yeah, you rock. Rock. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, You're welcome. You. Thank you. Are you Aaron? Yes. Hi, I'm Jemmy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm doing a podcast for Robin. Okay. Would you like to take part? Of course. Of course. Great. Can we scoot over to the this is, uh This is actually uh, Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. He's a, he's, a, he's a videographer. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? Nice to meet you. If you don't mind, he's going to film over your shoulder. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Are you getting? I wish I was dressed for it, but all right. <laughs> so you're over here? Yeah, would that be okay? So tell me about these photographs. They're some of the most interesting pieces I've seen in a very long time, and I'll tell you why. That means a lot to me. Oh, oh, well, it's well deserved. I think because not only is it stunning to see all kinds of people. celebrated in this way but then to see I'm noticing like in this one right here you have uh, one painted in blue with the white when one painted in white with the blue it's almost like a different way for them to come together so tell me what's your inspiration and what you're hoping to convey with these pieces they're they're brilliant I love them they're well, captivating my, is the thank word I would you. say yeah thank you um, my initial inspiration was to try to find a way of making people equal and isn't that the challenge that is the challenge. Uh, in the world and I first reflected backwards on what we're judging each other about in the first place right right so right. I I take um, culture um, clothing fashion statements you know you look at a person and you judge them based on their what they're wearing right who they're wearing what all, they, you know, all of that jump. stuff yeah so that's immediate let's remove that let's right. get that wipe it off okay so now I'm you a have a new now, now you have a, <laughs> now you have a nude body yeah. um, so what do we do with that nude body we're still gonna judge it yeah we're gonna judge it first on that color yeah on, are you Hispanic are you Asian are you black are you white you know you know whatever so I'm gonna remove that right and that's why I use the paint so what I wanted to talk about was you know does this does a zebra judge another zebra based on what kind of stripes it has or, right, a, or right. a bird on its feathers so if we can remove all that and be you know colorful and naked just like newborn babies would we judge each other the same mm -hmm. way no we wouldn't mm -hmm. after that of course is shapes and sizes well you're not going to get rid of that that's what's perfect that's what makes us all unique yeah yeah so there is got to 
be always something that's unique, that's telling. Right. But everything else is gone. So, and that's what I'm trying to say with this. That's great. And I love that you can't get rid of that, of the shapes and sizes, yeah. because it ends up being what's most celebrated, in my opinion. When I look at exactly. it, I think, you know, I, I look at, I mean, I'm just looking at the different pieces, and I'm like, wow, there really are all different shapes and sizes represented. And so that was that was purposeful for you? Yes. Was to, <laughs> I, I insisted on searching out different body types, different people, asking people. Every single person you see, they are not models. They're not paid models. They are all literally off of Facebook, social media, Instagram. Wow. Uh, even even one of them uh, we met in Target, you know. <laughs> you know, hey, would you mind posing? Come over to the studio, let's talk. You know, and then I give him a pitch. That doesn't sound weird. <laughs> exactly. No, that's not icky. But uh, we, we we would talk to them and and explain to them the story, yeah. and that helps for them to understand. Yeah, there is a, there is something really important that needs to be said here. That's amazing. So that's that's what we do, and and then the water has its own symbol as well. So what I'm doing is by putting the paint I'm, I'm giving them a piece they, they are now unique and, and vibrant and colorful just like on the inside right water however is society it's advertising it's commercialism it's it's wanting to wash all that away to put you back into a category oh you're a black lesbian blah 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 so let's put you over here you're a, you're a white which may or may not be true <laughs> <laughs> I can either confirm or deny the allegations set before me. Yes. But this is where we are in society. You know, we, we try to celebrate that we're all individual, but if you look at it from an advertising perspective, yeah. you're being put into a, a an algorithm. Marketing is absolutely based on yeah. putting you in a box. I actually stopped everything I was doing. I went back to school, got a degree in advertising mm. to learn how it all works. The mindset. And it's kind of like seeing behind the curtain of the wizard are pulling totally. the chains. Absolutely. And so that, that gave me this awakening of what I want to really talk about. Well, I think you're doing an incredible job. Is this is this a singular series that I'm looking at here, or is there more to come, it or are you moving so on to something else? so much more to come. I've okay. shot over a hundred people so far. Wow. I'm doing more. In fact, this morning, I'm, I already set up to go to uh, New York to shoot a, a, a wedding party. Stop. Uh, yeah, five men, five That's women, amazing. and they're going to have, I, I already see how in, in the same way with the same paint way. and everything? Oh same my way. gosh, that's awesome. So what I'm doing is all of the poses come from my inspiration. So I, I research a lot of Greek uh, Greek statues, Renaissance paintings. Oh, okay. A lot of, I read a lot of uh, uh, archetypes and fairy tales to look at you know how we're going to associate because really that's that's where we get our 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 stories right and then we apply the bodies to those stories right so for example right. the the Last Supper over there I was going to ask you about that one I'm like is that Last Supper or am I just seeing things well, okay I mean I, I'm Supper. trying to recreate scenes that are that are going to well but first of all it's a woman at the center of the table well so does it have to be a man, right. and that's what I'm asking. It's beautiful. Hey, does it have to be uh, uh, an Arab man who has a long beard? Does right. it have to be, you know? So, so all of those or, things. Or a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Come on, be honest. Right? That's how we usually see it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they didn't have them in Jerusalem. <laughs> and, and that's what I'm trying to speak about. We we have this whole story that we're putting out there that really isn't true. Right. We're all humans being. Right. Right. That's it. That's right. What it comes down to that. That's amazing. So when did you start doing this kind of photography? I mean, it's, uh, well, it's really this stunning. This particular project, about six months ago, I thought I was having a neck surgery. I thought I was going to die. So I figured I oh, better Jesus, do something <laughs> so that my wife Let has that something to see some other way. <laughs> But I've been a photographer since I was a kid. I was in the military as a combat photographer for 15 years. No kidding. Uh, a military photo magazine photographer, just traveling around for the military. Yeah. So wow. I got to see all aspects of life. Wow. And um, then when I got out, I uh, I was injured, a disabled veteran, and um, I got into commercial photography. And that's when I really started getting a bad taste in my mouth about the whole everything. You know. Well, if I may, if I may project or. Or assume something here. I can imagine that being a veteran and being on the being in 
wherever you were stationed, you were exposed to some very real life, yeah. raw emotions. Yeah. And then to then come back to America, where we are quite frankly living quite a, a life of privilege here. Yes. And seeing that blown up on a whole nother scale when it comes to advertising. Exactly. You can imagine that can play with your thought process. It really bit. does. And I I learned from an artist not too long ago that every artist has a story that they're really trying to say over and over again, maybe in different ways, but it's uh -huh. always a similar story. And my story is about closeness and unity and how we can be together mm -hmm. and how, how that can happen. So mm -hmm. this is essentially it. Yeah. You know, so like I said, the, the, the last supper was one that really jumped out at me. Like, I mean, because I think it's, I mean, first of all, it's the only one here I think that, that includes someone that's completely in white, which yeah. I, you know, but also the other one that jumped out at me was the female bodybuilder. Yes. Where did, tell me this backstory on that one. Facebook. Someone that liked my page and I, I asked her, oh my God, you're so beautiful. I would love to photograph you. She actually brought her husband to, for moral support. Uh -huh. And I photographed him more than I photographed her. No, no she, kidding. She ended up being the most amazing, amazing body yeah. to work with because honestly, you know, people stereotype a bodybuilder woman as uh, masculine totally. and oh, you know, she Absolutely. can't be a feminine. No, she's the most feminine woman with her husband. Right, right, right. So, right. Right, right. It was that was one of the most big, the biggest blessings I had was with people like that, people that are oversized. Yeah. Uh, we just did a shoot Saturday. This very very big woman came, and she was supposed to be just just moral support for her friend. And I said, no, there's no voyeurs here. <laughs> Everybody gets naked, everybody gets painted. So she came out and I I swear it was the most amazing, beautiful work we've ever done. Well then I can't help but ask, are you a subject in any of these photographs? I yes, I can't say that I can't do this without posing. There so you go. yes, I do have images of myself with there you my go. wife. We've actually shot our family uh, Christmas photo. Oh that's awesome. But with my children not naked. Right, I assume, I mean But uh, <laughs> Yes, I, I don't go there with the children. <laughs> Leave them over there. But uh, yeah, it, it's just something that you have to experience. Yeah. And and honestly, everybody as a result comes back to me and says, "Oh my God, this is the most re relieving thing, the most freedom I've ever felt." I believe it. The, they they've always had this thing that's bothered them, and now they don't have it anymore. Yeah. Because they can always say to themselves, "If I can pose naked in front of a stranger and right. get paint rubbed all over," right, me, right. Right, right. What is? What else is there? Right? Well, you know what? Maybe I'll sign up for a session one day. Just I would love just to have. Make you. sure it's, it's like the day before I get my hair done. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, I can shed some of some of my uh, my uh, what's mid materialistic insecurities, but not all of them. <laughs> As long as you're not a bleach blonde, because we had that mistake. We we had a bleach blonde. She she had just bleached her hair. She came in, oh. and we didn't know. This is a tempera. It's a it's a children's water. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's very very simple paint. Yeah. Uh, but it soaked into her hair, so she had like purple and blue hair for like a no. week. It was hilarious. No, so we learned from that experience. Right. <laughs> well, how did you get involved with foundation? Actually. The caterer mm -hmm. who is providing this amazing food. So yummy. Oh my gosh, she's those meatballs. The, she's wow. the one on this main wall here. She's the biggest oh, piece. Oh, stop it. There's no way. one in red. Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. That's her. Hey. And so, of course, she showed the art director. Art director fell in love, brought me over. I had just gotten her all of these pieces delivered a day before she called me, which was last week. There you go. Perfect and timing. they said, oh my God, we want to have you here. And I had to spend the, the entire last five days putting resin Bouncing and everything. Oh, so yeah. if you notice, the resin is all like splattered and painted. You know, but it's you know what like actually water. adds to it? I really it like it. I like it the way you did it, for sure. Have you ever, um, I just saw a show of the Blue Man Group a few weeks ago. Okay. Have you ever seen Blue Man Group? Yes, yeah, amazing. I think you would love, okay, I was
was gonna ask because I thought you would love it. Based on just, I don't know, looking around and seeing all this amazing color. Yeah, what they're doing is they're covering themselves to remove an identity of a human being. Totally. And making themselves into something. So, you know, and actually, um, I read that their name, Blue Man Group, was in order to inspire the, the word based on sound of human. Wow. Fun fact. <laughs> nothing but good luck and the best of fortune um, being a part of this gallery opening Thank you and so much. I really feel like what you're doing is something literally that I've never seen before and that's always that good really right? means a lot to me honestly <laughs> as an artist to hear that I'm doing something right I, and it's always a stretch it's always searching you should see my other work I definitely will yeah. I definitely will so thank you so much thank lovely you. meeting you would you sign my guest book So I have this um, guest book. I'll actually also let you uh, choose oh. and I sign the back of it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, choices, choices. Yeah, so you get to pick oh my goodness. Okay. Um, let me find the page I'm on. I'm having everyone from the gallery sign this page. Oh, nice. That's a nice uh, keepsake for yourself. Well, actually, it's going to be auctioned off. Um, oh, you have a pen, Frank. Right? Because I couldn't oh, find mine. It's actually going to be auctioned off. Yeah, anywhere. It's going to be auctioned off for charity once I uh, fill it up. Oh, I kind of really like this one. Let me see. Oh. These are beautiful. The Human Spectrum Collection. Hey! Subject in our midst. That's awesome. Look at that. That's incredible. I really, I really love what you're doing. I really, truly do. I think I'm going to keep you. this one. Thank you. Oh, you know what's amazing about this? The way the water hit. It looks like angel wings. Oh my god, you're right. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. You're so right. That's incredible. It's all a split second in time. I'm going to um, give you my card as well. Before I forget. I will. And I also would like to take a picture of you. Um, of course. By your work. Whichever piece you feel like. Actually, oh, we do it by the yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we talked about it so much. <laughs> Since we talked about it so much, we might as well. Oh, Jesus Christ! Thank you. <laughs> okay, here for a second. I will, absolutely, you betcha. You betcha. Thank you so much. Put this in there. Put this in there. And I love the new pie pieces too. They were actually here, but they were here last time. Oh, they were there. How you doing, girlfriend? It's doing great. I love you, Debbie. Thank you. All right, 
And finally, I'm here with Robin, the director. So tell me how exciting this night is for you to open your gallery. It is one of the most exciting nights I have had in many, many years. Oh my gosh, yes. I'm so happy for you. So yeah, what have you? What has the experience been so far for you tonight? And seeing all these people here, and what kind of conversations and comments have they made? Yeah, 300 people RSVP on my second grand opening is just incredible. That's I awesome. have never thought I would be this rare be this where where I am today yeah it was eight weeks today that I started the demo oh my gosh so it's only been four weeks actually less than four weeks that we've been open and it's just we're actually putting this place on the map so we are so excited I'm so excited for you I mean when you tell me this used to be like some sort of doctor's office or medical facility a medical office. we're in an <laughs> industrial area there is no other galley who, who does the openings that we do here so yeah yeah we are so excited it's like 360 from, or not 360, 180 from a medical absolutely. place. Absolutely. It's beautiful what you've done and everything. Absolutely. And so, how did you find all the artists that are involved? And uh, there were some artists that I worked with uh, prior mm -hmm. uh, that had no contracts with any other uh, galleries. And between other artists, uh, that they just kept calling me and telling me I have this artist that does class art, that does oral paintings, that does traditional, transitional, contemporary. So it's just growing every single day. I, I, I'm so excited. That's amazing. And what's your what's your vision for this gallery? My vision and goal is um, when I actually got hired eight weeks ago today. You got hired eight weeks ago? At, I right, think they made a good decision. The demo, the demo <laughs> and the renovation. We hope to open up thousands of showings throughout the United States and throughout the world. Wow. You know, I, I did not do this just for one show when we, we are ready to go. These two owners are just incredible. Everything is awesome and um, they stand behind me 100% and we are just, we're going to burst. Good for you. So this yes, is, this is just like this the, place on the map. This is the flagship location. Absolutely. Is every gallery going to be, lo uh, have artists that are specific to that location or how, uh, do you know how Yes, uh, but there are a few artists that are just, they're stars here and it's just amazing that I'm able to introduce them to the to the real world to new places yeah yeah, so yeah. Like young emergency emerging um, artists all over the world uh, Greece Italy Spain yeah um, Switzerland they're, wow they're actually calling me now so I'm ah, so excited everyone really, wants to really be with us so that's really great the buzz, the buzz is going on that's awesome where do you think your next location might be uh, we are actually planning a, a new opening in Jupiter. Ooh. Yes, uh, the space won't be available till March, the end of March, early April, and that okay. should be my very next location, my well, next, next gallery. I so. wish you nothing but super oh, duper luck. I'm you. so we proud so of you excited. and thank everything you. you've done. I mean, it's a total. Uh, homage to girl power. Absolutely. So congratulations! Absolutely. It's female all the way, and I'm looking for all all the female support that we can get. So. There you go. Well, you've got one right here. Exactly. So thank you so much Aww. for inviting me to do this podcast with you guys tonight. And we are so it's excited. been a blast. I'm so glad you're here. Yay. Thank you. Hugs. Love you, girl. Love you. Congratulations. Absolutely. Yay. So I'll see you in Jupiter and Moot. Heck in yeah. March. Uh, but we are having another opening in the next couple of weeks. All the artists are rota rotating all the art, so we're very excited. Awesome. I yes. can't wait. I will definitely help spread the word. Absolutely. For sure. Thank, Thank you, you, Robin. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. You have successfully curved the cube.